to share a few thoughts about embracing biblical poetry based on Leland Riken's excellent primer, Sweeter Than Honey, Richer Than Gold, a good introduction to biblical poetry in general and to interpreting Psalms in particular. And essentially, we want to answer three questions. Firstly, why are we afraid of poetry? Secondly, why do we need poetry? And thirdly, what is poetry? So we're going to do this fairly briefly. Let's begin. Why do we fear poetry? If you are like many people, perhaps even most people, the very idea of poetry strikes at least a measure of apprehension when you hear the word spoken, especially if it's suggested that you should read it and study it and interpret it. If you're a preacher, that you should preach from it. So why do we fear poetry? Well, a few basic thoughts. Firstly, we find poetry difficult to understand. Now, it's true that poetry can be difficult to understand, but often we've built up that expectation to being such a barrier that it's more a psychological difficulty than it is actually an inherent difficulty with the texts that we need to understand. Second, we consider poetry as an optional extra. So because we're a little bit nervous of it, we rationalize that we will leave poetry to those who have a particular aptitude for poetry, perhaps people that are more artistically gifted than we are. And in this way, we excuse ourselves from the responsibility to engage with poetry. It's very similar to the way Christians are able to reason that evangelism is scary, so we'll leave evangelizing to the evangelists as opposed to the idea that we're all called to be a witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we find ways to rationalize it as an optional extra in our walk with Christ. Thirdly, we see poetry as an unnatural form of discourse that doesn't appeal to ordinary people. So we see it as this otherworldly thing, this foreign thing that doesn't touch our ordinary life. It is a little unnatural. It's certainly different to the way we normally speak and write and communicate. But it's maybe not as different as the stories that we persuade ourselves are true. And lastly, we fear poetry because we judge that it's just not worth the effort required to master poetry. If we want to become skilled at working with it, it's going to just take too much from us. Now let's consider why we need poetry. So why do we need poetry? Well, poetry actually exists on a continuum of difficulty, but believers can understand most of the biblical poetry. So yes, it can be more difficult than other kinds of literature. The truth is, though, that some narrative texts are difficult. Some of Paul's letters are difficult. Poetry is on a continuum of difficulty. And most of the poetry in the Bible, especially the poetry in the Psalms, is actually pretty accessible to us. Secondly, God intends for us to understand and enjoy poetry. And this is the key point. If you take nothing else out of this introduction, take this out. God intends for us to enjoy and understand poetry. How do we know this? Very simple. He gave us one third of our Bible in poetry forms. And even the parts that are not written as poetry are very poetic. They're full of artistry and imagery. Now, if God set about communicating with us through his word, and he chose to give us one third of that word as poetry, you better believe that God expects us to understand and enjoy poetry. The third observation here is that poetry is less unnatural than we tend to imagine. So we tend to think that other kinds of writing are the way we normally speak, and poetry is foreign and unnatural to it. But actually, we speak in figures of speech and uh, imagery-type language all the time. Nobody actually kills time. Nobody buries the hatchet. And yet we use these kinds of expressions 
they're figurative expressions. Even our normal daily language is not truly prose, which is often what we think we speak in in normal communications. Listen to what Riken says. I'll read a section for, for you. He says, In everyday situations, we do not speak prose, complete sentences with a subject and predicate. We speak an associative discourse comprised of single words and phrases, disjointed and incomplete sentence fragments, and arrangement by stream of consciousness instead of formal syntax or sentence structure. Prose is everyday discourse at its best behavior. And he's spot on. If you record a little bit of how you speak in daily life, it's not prose. There's quite a lot of poetry in it, actually. So it's not as unnatural as we tend to allow ourselves to think. And lastly, it is worth the effort to master poetry. It's worth it for a couple of reasons. One, there's a literary benefit. There is beauty, eloquence, richness, culture that is communicated through good poetry. But more importantly, there's a spiritual benefit. God engages our hearts and minds through poetry such as what we have in the Psalms. And if God chose to give us one third of the Bible in that form, we dare not take the view that it's not worth our effort to learn to master it, especially if we are leaders of his people. We are charged with preaching the whole counsel of God, and one third of it comes to us in the form of poetry. So what is poetry? A couple of thoughts here. In most respects, poetry is actually quite similar to other forms of communication. It actually has more in common with other forms of communication than it has that is different from other forms of communication. It differs in three main ways. Firstly, poetry is more concentrated than other forms of communication. In other words, poets squeeze a lot of rich meaning into a very small number of words. So it's, it's dense or concentrated communication. Two, poetry is more artistic than daily communication. It has rich expressions. English poetry uses a lot of rhyme and rhythm. Biblical poetry uses parallelism and imagery. But there's a, an artistic beauty about poetic communication. And thirdly, poetry is more visual. So whereas we use figures of speech and visual language in all our communication, poetry primarily communicates in the language of pictures. So in conclusion, a couple of thoughts. One, the barriers we build towards poetry are mostly unnecessary. God expects us to enjoy and understand poetry. He gave us one third of the Bible as poetry. So he definitely believes that you and I can understand it, enjoy it, and teach and preach from it. I hope that's helpful.